The Nether is probably the most dangerous area in Minecraft, but no worries because in this video I completely explain how to survive in the Nether and we're starting right now. So once you've built your Nether portal and entered into the Nether, the first thing you want to do is to secure your Nether portal so that you do not get killed by a ghast or from piglins or any other hostile mob that spawns in the Nether. What I would generally suggest doing is bringing some cobblestone with you and completely blocking up one side just like this. Then on the other side you can simply build a little bit of a structure around it, maybe just some walls very easily just like this. And then once you have a small little area like this, it can be a sort of a little micro nether base. Then you can make a little exit just like this. And you'll have an area to go if let's say there's some zombified piglins that come after you or a ghast. If you want an extra layer of protection, putting down an iron door with levers on either side can also be a good idea. As with this, let's say there were some piglins coming after you, you could simply lock yourself in your house just like this or in your little nether area here and you could be safe and go back into the overworld. It's also always a very good idea to have a chest right here next to your portal with a flint and steel in it, or at very least every time you go into the nether to have a flint and steel with you, as the chance of a ghast destroying your portal is not very low, although having it blocked up like this definitely makes it a lot safer. But let's say you lose your portal in the nether, if you find some piglins you can trade with them for obsidian, as well as some iron nuggets and gravel. With those ingredients of course you can make a flint and steel and a nether portal to return home, and you can also get those ingredients from the nether fortress as the nether fortresses have all the ingredients for the nether portal as well. Each of the five biomes in the nether has its own share of dangers and benefits, I'm gonna go over those right now. We'll start off with the basic nether biome, the nether wastes. Now this biome has a large amount of piglins and zombified piglins, but the big benefit of this biome, even though it's kind of the default nether biome and certainly the most common biome in the nether, is the fact that there's large amounts of exposed quartz ore as well as gold ore, whereas in most other biomes that ore is either not there or it's a lot harder to see. However, the danger of this biome is the fact that there are piglins here as well as ghasts, so you're gonna have to watch out for both of those. Next we have the Soul Sand Valley. Now the Soul Sand Valley has very few mobs in it, it just has an occasional ghast and the occasional skeleton that'll spawn in here. But the really big benefit of the Soul Sand Valley is that there is a large amount of bone blocks in it, and of course bone blocks are incredibly useful for things like bone milling your crops, or even just building out of, as they are quite a nice block. And as they're an item that's not that easy to get your hands on, having a large variety of them in the Soul Sand Valley here can be quite useful. You can even see a skeleton that spawned in it right here. The last thing that's incredibly useful about this biome is that if a nether fortress spawns in here, the amount of mobs in that fortress will be much more than in your normal nether fortress, as the mobs can't really spawn that much on the soul sand here, so they're really limited to only spawn in the nether fortress itself, therefore making there be a lot more mobs in that fortress. Next we have the Crimson Forest, which has the amazing benefit of the Crimson Stem Block, which is sort of like the red nether wood. And one of the best parts of this block is that the planks of it, the logs of it, in fact every variety of this type of log is completely fireproof so you have no need to worry about building with this in the nether or in the overworld in terms of it being burnt up by lava or by fire. The Crimson Forest also tends to have the most piglins of any biome in the game, which is quite useful if you want to do some trading with them. And the last feature of the Crimson Forest is that hoglins spawn in this biome. Now hoglins are a rather dangerous sort of large nether pig. What's really nice is that if you kill them, you will get pork chops from them. Unlike the zombified piglin where you only get rotten flesh, or even just the piglins where you don't get any food at all, with the hoglins here you do get a pork chop drop, which is very useful because it is one of the only reliable food sources in the entire nether. Just be aware this is a very dangerous mob, and you should avoid them at all costs unless you have good armor in this biome. Next, the Warped Forest. Now this biome is almost like peaceful mode, with the only hostile mob that spawns here being the Enderman. What's really nice is that's actually a great benefit, as the Enderman is not very commonly found in any place in the Nether or the Overworld except for this biome, and when trying to get yourself some Ender Pearls to go to the end, this is a really great place to find them, as you can get yourself a large amount of Ender Pearls very quickly, as there is certainly no shortage of Endermen in this biome. Also, we have the Great Warped Stem here, which is the blue form of nether wood, which as well as the red counterpart cannot burn, so it's great for building, and it's also quite easy to get as these extremely large warped nether trees grow, which have massive amounts of wood blocks on them, oftentimes over an entire stack. Last, the Basalt Deltas, which is one of my favorite nether biomes in terms of the actual look of it. But don't be fooled, this biome is extremely dangerous. This biome has a large amount of lava in it, as well as basalt and blackstone blocks. The blackstone 
is a very useful and unique building block, as it has a huge amount of different varieties that can be crafted out of it, making it one of the best building blocks in the entire game. However, the big danger of this rather interestingly generated biome is the fact that there are very large amounts of magma cubes in it, so it's good to avoid those wherever you find them, as you will run into lots of them, especially these large ones, among these cascading lava pools of the basalt biome in the nether. Fortresses and bastion remnants are a very important part of the nether, however I'm not going to be covering those in this video and I will cover them in a separate video. There are a lot of different dangers in the nether that you have to face and overcome, including fall damage, dangerous mobs, hunger, burning, and getting lost. I'm going to cover the best way to handle all of these. We're going to start with fall damage. Fall damage is probably the biggest danger in the nether, even more than lava or dangerous mobs, considering the fact that it's so easy to accidentally fall off of a cliff. But there's two things you can do to easily combat this and make fall damage in the nether be a breeze to overcome. The first one is boats. Now boats are a great way of overcoming fall damage in any biome. All you have to do is place down a boat where you want to fall down, simply row over to the place where you want to fall just like that, fall down and you're completely safe. I'm going to quickly repeat this in survival to prove that there's also no fall damage in this game mode either. Now you can see I did not take any fall damage, but obviously boats are not lava proof so if you end up falling in lava you'll definitely have to get out or you will burn to death very quickly. The other way to not be defeated by fall damage is to use twisting vines. Now this clever plant is very easy to be found in the warped forest biome, and you can basically use it to MLG somewhat like a water bucket. If you go down and spam right click, you can place it down before you fall and avoid your fall damage very very easily. But this is also a really good item for going up different places, so let's say we want to get up to this little ledge up here. We just look down, pull down right click, and make ourselves a sort of ladder like this, very very simply. And there is no need to have some blocks to place this on, so it's certainly better than ladders in that respect. It also fits into the nether quite well. Also, once you have these, you can go down them as well. They were basically just like a ladder block, and they're super useful that way. Let me just show off the Twisting Vine MLG here in Survival. It really is the exact same as the Water Bucket MLG, it's just the nether version. You simply look down, spam right click, and you can place it down before you fall. It really isn't that difficult to do. The trick is just to look down and spam right click as fast as you can. The next major danger in the nether is mobs. Now these are quite dangerous and every single one has different tips and tricks to defeat it and I will show you those right now. First we have the ghast. Now the ghast is certainly a very dangerous mob, but it also has a very low amount of HP. However, hitting it can be quite difficult. What I would generally suggest is getting yourself a bow, preferably with power 5, as when you hit it, you can simply one-shot it just like this. Now, of course, it's quite easy to show that off, but something you also want to do is bring a shield with you, as you can very easily avoid the fireballs that the gas shoots. And let's say you have some arrows with you to the nether and you're running low. If you break a little bit of glowstone, you can actually double the amount of arrows that you have. It's really cool, because when crafting spectral arrows, you double your arrow supply. Just like this. Let's say we crafted four arrows just like that with the glowstone dust, and actually we have to do this in a crafting table. Just like this. So we put four arrows in the crafting grid and we put in glowstone dust just like that. The one arrow plus the four glowstone dust gives us two spectral arrows, so we can extend our arrow supply that way very easily, and then with that we'll have more shots to aim at those ghasts, as it can be quite hard to shoot. Also a crossbow can work very well, as well as a firework crossbow, as there's a very large damage radius there. And if you want to be really dangerous, you can always try and hit the ghasts' fireballs back at it. Endermen can spawn in many different places in the nether, but they mostly spawn in the warped forest biome. How do you actually kill one of these? As they can be quite dangerous. Well, all you have to do is quickly break yourself some blocks, make a small hole or just a small little area just like this. All you basically need is a small bit of blocks above your head, so you are in a two block tall space. Even something like this could work, but ideally you want something so there's a lot of blocks around you, maybe something like this. Then look at the Enderman if it's not already angry at you. And once you're in this space here, you can hit it without it being able to hit you, and you are safe to attack it as you need to, without having to worry about this Enderman's extremely high attack damage. And of course if you're trying to get a lot of Ender Pearls to defeat this to go to the end, then bringing a Looting 3 Sword with you would be a nice thing as well. Although you probably don't have that if you haven't been to the end yet anyway. But overall the main trick to defeating Enderman is to simply mine into a space just like this, or to put some blocks above your head, so you can be completely safe from its attacks, and you can definitely defeat it every single time using this method. How do you defeat an aggressive piglin? Simply place on a piece of gold armor and it's now passive to you. 
Now, of course, you can kill it manually with, let's say, an axe or a sword, but simply having a piece of gold armor on you will make this mob completely passive to you. You can even trade with it. However, if you do open up a chest, a shulker box, just things like that, then they will enter attack mode again no matter what you're wearing, whether it's gold or otherwise. But certainly wearing gold is generally a good solution to not be attacked by these piglins. And if you want an area not have a lot of piglins in it, you can also have soul items down it, like let's say some soul torches or some soul campfires, or maybe even some soul lanterns, and that'll certainly give you a lot less of the piglins than you usually would have, as piglins really do not like those items. In fact, they don't even like these zombified piglins either. And that leads us onto the zombified piglins. How do you defeat these? Now, the thing about zombified piglins is that they are passive to you unless you attack them. But oftentimes, people will hit them by accident, which can certainly cause a lot of damage and a lot of trouble. Because when you hit one, well, let's find out right now. All these zombified piglins in the entire area will become hostile and come after you. Now, certainly with a large amount of the zombified piglins chasing you, it can be a menace to kill all these different mobs. So how do you actually defeat these, as they can have a massive mob of these grow? And of course, it's very difficult to kill a mass amount of these. Generally, what I would suggest is either letting yourself be killed so they will return to being passive at you, or what you could do is you can actually just build up a couple blocks, and they have a really bad reach radius, so simply going up three blocks like this. However, of course, this doesn't technically kill them, so you're basically waiting here forever as they never stop being angry towards you. But being up here like this, you could try and kill them all, although there's generally more that spawn. Or at very least, you could probably pillar your way over here, or at least tower your way over to maybe your nether portal or something like that, and return. Of course, being in hardcore, these guys can be quite a menace. But generally, if you don't have a lot of levels, I would honestly suggest letting them kill you, as in they will not be angry towards you anymore. But overall, to actually kill them, something like, let's say, a smite 5 axe would be very effective at that, as they are an undead mob, and axes are one of the best weapons in the game. Magma cubes are quite a dangerous mob in Minecraft, because they have this interesting effect of not having what known as an invulnerability timer on their attacks. This basically means with most normal mobs, if they hit you once, they have to wait at least a very small amount of time before they can damage you again. However, this is not true with the magma cube, making them quite dangerous, because although their attacks are somewhat low in power, they have this ability to be able to hit you again and again and again and again, in a very small amount of time, being able to kill an even very powerful player quite quickly. Now the way to combat this is getting the magma cube away from you. So what I would suggest for this is a knockback sword, or a punch bow. Both of these will knock back the mob that you're hitting, making it not be able to hit you with its attacks, so they're very, very quick. Because, of course, if it's far away from you, it can't actually hit you with its attacks. Also, if you do want to get magma cream from this mob, I would suggest having looting on your sword, as magma cube's magma cream drop rate is quite low. All that fighting's gotten me hungry and I need to eat. But what can I eat in the nether? Can I eat crimson root just like this? No. Is there something that's an edible item I can grow on soul soil? No, there's not. So how do I get food in the nether? Well, there are actually ways you can get it in the nether, and they're pretty simple as well, and I'm going to break them down right now. First, we have mushroom soup. If you collect some of the plentiful brown and red mushrooms from the nether, but not the crimson and warped fungi just like this, and then find a tree in the nether, so that could be a crimson tree or a warped tree, it doesn't matter, and you break some of the blocks. Then craft yourself a crafting table, and also in the crafting table, with these crimson planks or warped planks, make some bowls like this. You can, with one bowl, a brown mushroom and a red mushroom, make a mushroom stew. You can also have this recipe go in your crafting grid that's personal, just like this, and that will give you a mushroom stew here. And this is actually not that bad of a food item. If we drink it right here, you can see it actually refills our hunger quite well. And what's nice is that you can reuse the bowl, so as long as you can collect a very large amount of the red and brown mushrooms, then you have yourself a rather viable food source. And red and brown mushrooms are extremely common in the nether. In fact, they're probably the best biomes to find red and brown mushrooms in. And so you can collect those rather easily. And after getting all of those, just having maybe a stack of each in your inventory and a stack of bowls with only three slots in your inventory, you can have a rather decent food source that comes completely from the nether and can be made here if you need food and you don't have any supplies for it on you. The next one is certainly not an ideal food source, but it is killing the zombified piglin.
piglins to get yourself some rotten flesh. Now rotten flesh is certainly not a very good food source, but it is here, and if you need to, you can always kill the zombified piglins to get it, although of course they are so angry when you kill one of them. Getting a lot of zombified piglin rotten flesh is almost always deadly, so I would certainly suggest it as your last resort. The best food source in the nether comes from the hoglins, and that is pork chops, but be aware that they are quite dangerous in full netherite armor, they are even quite a difficult mob to defeat, but they do drop lots of raw pork chops and leather. Now the one question would be, well they're raw pork chops, how do you actually get normal pork chops from them and be able to cook them to eat? Well, what's really cool is that furnaces can be crafted out of black stone, which means you can get these from the ingredients just in the nether, which is quite easy. And then with that, you can simply make yourself a furnace and smelt it. But of course, to smelt it, you need a fuel. So something you can do is that you can smelt it with either coal from wither skeletons, although something even easier is to simply bring a bucket with you from the iron nuggets obtained from piglins, and then get yourself the lava bucket there, put down the furnace, put in the lava bucket, and smelt your raw pork chops into one of the best foods in the game in terms of fillingness, which is the cooked pork chop. Just be aware of the pesky piglins here that will certainly try and kill you throughout the entire process. Burning to death in the nether is quite a significant danger from either standard fire like this, or soul fire like that, or even lava. In fact, soul fire is extremely dangerous as there is double damage from it unlike standard fire. And of course, lava has a massive amount of damage too. There are three ways, however, that you can help combat the heat in the nether and hopefully have dying in lava and fire be a little bit less common. The first one is a potion of fire resistance. Now, of course, we all know about the potion of fire resistance, but you can also get it from the piglin. So when trading gold with the piglin, there's a decently significant chance for either a three minute potion of fire resistance or a three minute splash potion of fire resistance. And upon drinking this, of course, you get three minutes of fire resistance. So that's a quite cool thing. However, let's say you're already on fire and are dying, what do you do? You try and put yourself out with water, the water will simply evaporate. However, if you craft a cauldron and you place this down in the nether and put water in there, for whatever reason, the water can be in the cauldron. So if you're on fire, simply go into the cauldron like this. However, you might have just noticed a one level of the water went down there, so you can only put yourself out of fire so many times with a cauldron before it completely dries up out of water, but it is a very nice way of putting yourself out, so maybe putting some waterlogged cauldrons around your nether areas could be a great idea to stay a little bit safer, as being in lava or fire is rather common in the nether. And the last thing is netherite armor. Now, of course, this isn't that easy to get, but having netherite armor will give you a special protection against fire. It is, of course, not a complete protection, you'll get a lot less damage from fire than you would with any other type of armor. So in having netherite armor, that's a great idea in the nether, as of course lava is such a big danger. And having fire resistance on netherite armor too makes it even more protected. So let's say having full netherite armor with fire resistance on each piece would make you almost completely immune to lava, although of course you would still burn in it after a certain amount of time. The last danger of the nether is sometimes overlooked, but can often be quite fatal, and that is getting lost. So something I would always suggest is that if you're right next to your portal when you first go into the nether, just simply turn on F3, then press the F2 button to get a screenshot, and you will know the coordinates of your portal so you can get back to that rather easily without having to worry about not knowing where your portal was. The other thing that's really important to do, as of course you can know the exact coordinates of something, but actually getting there is a bit more difficult, is to mark out your path with what I would call an unnatural block, so something like let's say warped planks, basically any single block that you would not be able to find naturally, just in the nether, so like let's say, you know, don't mark out your path with maybe gold ore, or with netherrack, and especially something like warped planks is good, as the color is rather opposing to the netherrack here. Although, of course, having, let's say, some crimson planks maybe wouldn't be quite so good, as they do kind of blend into the netherrack a bit. Torches are also great, as they kind of make a bit of light there, so it's a little bit easier to see where your path should be as well. Just be aware that both of these methods should be kept up rather regularly in terms of putting blocks somewhat close to each other, as if they're too far away, you may see one block, but where's the other one to go down to? You get lost because of that. Also, a lodestone, which is an amazing item that was actually added in the nether update, is really good for finding your way as well. They work in any dimension, and if you place one down, right click on one with a compass, then you will basically have a lodestone compass. Also, the lodestone is crafted with chiseled stone and a netherite ingot, so it's not the cheapest item, but it's certainly something useful if you're in a late game world, or even just a world that has a good amount of netherite, and you want to not lose your way. Now with this charged compass, it'll always point to the lodestone, no matter where you are. 
so you can go around your world and then come back knowing the compass is pointing towards lodestone and of course if the compass is pointing to the top of your screen like it is right now then you would know that's the right way to go and of course if it's pointing this way it always kind of point towards where the compass is like you can kind of see it is doing right there and finally, something you can do as well, which can help you if you get lost, or even just if you happen to die in the nether, which is of course we want to avoid, is to use the respawn anchor. This is great for your nether base. The respawn anchor is crafted with six crying obsidian and three glowstone blocks. Now you get crying obsidian from trading with piglins. And if you right click on the respawn anchor with a full glowstone block, it'll charge it once two times, three times, four times, and you don't actually have to charge it four times, you only have to charge it once. Once you've charged it, simply right click on it once, and your respawn point will be set here. It's exactly like another bed. Now if we actually die, and we'll basically just jump off here to have a quick little death here, then basically, when we respawn back right here, you'll see it'll make that sound, one bit of that respawn anchor will disappear, but we'll be right here next to the respawn anchor safe. It's just good to remember with something like this, that you have to keep recharging it or it will eventually run out, as those four uses there after that's done, it cannot respawn you anymore. But this is certainly a great block, it also has this cool nether portal texture on the top, and overall that's a great thing to do if you get killed by let's say this skeleton here, and you want to come back rather quickly instead of taking a very long time. You can even bring these with you in the nether and charge them as you go. So you basically don't have too much of an issue with, let's say, finding your way back to a certain saved point. If you want more information on how to link portals in the nether and actually build a nether hub, I have a video on that. There's an eye card on the screen right now. If you click on that, you will go to a video where you can learn as much about that as you want. But anyway, I will see you later!